Hello YouTube, in this tutorial I'll be making a remake of my previous lighting tutorial because I have a better version kind of set up now as well as because I've had a new request and uh, well, I'm constantly improving all my techniques so I figured I should just make an update so I'll just quickly start off so normally you're just going to have a Oh, that's right, I remember that. Now you can all see my keys, isn't that great? Alright, so normally you're just going to start off in your basic scene, and you just want to add your objects. What the hell? There we go. And then you're just going to give it a material, and now we're going to set up the lighting. So, what we're going to do first is either add a sun or a spot depending on whether you want the whole entire area to be lit or the certain section so I'm just gonna go for the sun lamp for this tutorial so that's here and if you want it to have shadows make sure you have the newest blender test build which is 2.64 because with 2.63a there are no sun shadows so you have your sun lamp here and it's best to have it a bit on an angle because Frankly, just a pure kind of straight down lighting isn't very eye pleasing. So, get your sun, just rotate it on any kind of angle. So, you know, more or less like that. Give it an energy of about 0.8 and make it a slightly yellowy color because that's what our sun's like. So, you know, that's our sun. I'm just going to click shadow and go to variance. Variance is a more realistic type of shadowing as you can see. Wait, let me just fix up that error. If you get any kind of errors like this where the sun cuts out, that's because its range isn't set high enough. For you, you can see, for example, the shadow's range stops about here. So they're the kind of boundaries of the shadows that the sun can create. So <clears throat> I'm going to extend that up where it goes frustum size in the lighting settings. You're just going to put that up to about 50. And one thing to remember is the higher the frost room size is, the crappier the shadows look. So you're going to have to put the quality size up. Now the only problem with variant shadow maps is that they do use a lot of CPU energy. Like, you know, with my quad core beast of death, it's using quite a lot. <clears throat> so you're going to have to up it up a bit. It's about 1024. And the best kind of usage for a shadow size is the power of two ratio, which is 512, 1024, 2048, and 4096. You don't usually go any higher than that because uh, most computers can't handle that. So the usual kind of acceptable range is between 512 and 1024. You just, <clears throat> you don't really want to go any higher than that. I'm just going to go put it to simple for now. Yeah, it's ugly. I'm gonna raise the shadow resolution up. There we go. And you want to raise the bias down. The bias is how far the shadow comes out of, so or where the shadow starts actually. <clears throat> I can't really give a good example of this because it's not exactly visible, so I won't really bother with that. So put the bias down to like something 0 0.3. Right, and you can leave those settings there, and the shadow. Put the shadow to something like a light blue, or a, a dark grey blue colour, so... About that. Alright, now that we have... Oh, that is because of the bias, so you have to raise it up a bit. Basically, you just want the bias set so there's no ugly lines. Alright, there we go. Alright, so now we're going to add another two lamps, and they are a hemi lamp. Just going to lift that up. And you're going to put it at the opposite angle of the sun. So, it'll make, it makes it, yeah, make its energy about 0.3. And rotate it to the opposite angle of the sun. So, more or less. So, like that. This is going to be the reflection of the sky. So, just place that wherever you want. And since the sky is blue, we're going to make this a light blue color. And make sure you turn off specular, because you don't want specular light to be reflected from the ground. <clears throat> now, you're going to add another handy amp. 
and this one's going to be rotated upwards and towards the sun, which is going to be reflection from the ground. So just position that wherever you want, and rotate it more or less towards the sun. And then make its energy 0.2 and give it a slightly browny color. There we go. And that is the lighting setup. So that's it. And another little tip is <coughs> mist settings. As you can see, mine aren't exactly great. Let me just change that a bit. Mist is good because it kind of, I don't know, adds a little, adds some effect to your level. And it gives a kind of <coughs> transition between the ground and the sky. For example, if I didn't have mist, it's just kind of just a sharp line and then the sky. Whereas with mist, if the distance is set to very far, then you can see it gives a kind of like a nice kind of blurred transition. So yeah, that's it for this lighting tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, sorry it wasn't the greatest of tutorials. I'm still working on some new things and I'll hopefully release those uh, in a few days, maybe a week. So yeah, that's all for now. See you.